against you when you will swoon over these beautiful pictures. Oh, David, it isn't even light out yet. Right. Let's not lose all that beautiful darkness. Come on, baby, let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And, the, and the fact that it's, it's pouring rain doesn't bother you? That's like asking Michelangelo if he's afraid of heights. It's the challenge of the thing. Of course, you people wouldn't understand that kind of thing. It's what we artists thrive on. Anybody can take a picture in the sunlight. All right, Matthew Brady. Let's go win a photo contest. All right, let's go. Up. One, two, three, four. Oh, I like that. Put your hand right on the spot. That's it. Now, now, now the, the, the umbrella further back. That's beauty. David, somehow this feels very unnatural. I take a picture, right? <clears throat> Out in sub-zero weather in our evening gown? Don't think we never went to bed. That's a nice meal out there. Oh. Wait a minute. Okay. Let's put the umbrella a little, a little further, a little further back. I like that, Phil. That, that's beautiful, darling. Uh, just a minute. Oh. Well, it's all right. Don't worry about the thing. I'll, I'll, I'll replace that ball in the second. Here we go. Yeah, a little high. Okay. Hey, you know, it looks better without the boat. All right. Here we go. That's, don't move. Don't move. You move, I'll kill you. Stay right there. Hello? Don't move. Tony, Tony, can I call you back later? It's raining. Don't, don't move. Tony, look, I'm taking a picture of Philip. But Tony, I, I worked all weekend. Don't you think I'm entitled to a little... Kick a couple of teeth right out of my mouth. He just oh. kicked two teeth out of my mouth. 
And come at me. That's self-defense, ain't it? Sure it is. Hey, uh, Chief, you the one I hit last night? Yeah, sure. sit down, sit down. Oh, no, no, Chief, you... You, you know, I, I wouldn't mean a thing like that. I, you come at me, that's what I want. Keep quiet. Over the window over there. The rest of you, I want order, please. Chief, you go along with me, and I'll go along with you. Drunk and disorderly, all right? I, I'll just plead guilty and... You, you don't plead, you're just being arraigned. What? You're being arraigned. You don't make a plea here. You're just being arraigned. Somebody took my overcoat. I, uh, 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 Chief, uh, I must have hit him a pretty good wallop. Look at his head there. You know, I got uh, lagged in spots. Mary Wallace, Bowie. Docket number 01100. Oh, hi, Dave. I'm sorry. I've been having this grip of... There's heat in here. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Mary Wallace Bowie. Is your name Mary Wallace Bowie? You are charged with the crime of larceny in that on the afternoon of December 3rd, 1964, in the vicinity of Dave Custer Street, you did remove money and valuables from the person of Herbert Wilson of Eight Wheeler Street. You have a right to counsel, you have a right to a German secure counsel, you have a right to hearing, you have a right to wait. What are you doing here? Oh, I got drafted like a rumble sick, apparently, or hung over. <laughs> Samuel Chapin! Samuel Chapin! Salt Lake, uh, that's you for. A little girl there was very fond of me. Docket you know, number one. Out that part of the Complaining witness, Mrs. Irene Krug. Mrs. Irene Krug, are you the complaining witness? Do you swear the contents of this affidavit? Certainly. You are charged with a crime? Yes, I, I plead guilty, Your Honor. Vagrancy. Prisoner. Listen to the charge. What? Well, I... You were charged with the crimes of burglary, the possession of burglar's tools... What? The possession of burglar's tools and felonious assault. I, I know I hit the chief there. I know I done that part, you but know, I never... On the night of January 5th, 1965, you did break and enter a store and dwelling place. Located at 227 East York I, Avenue. I'm a vagrant. I never done nothing except... Listen to the charge. 227 East York Avenue did remove money and valuables and with burglar's implements. Did assault and resist an office to the law and performance of his duty. No, 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 wait, wait, now, listen, Your Honor, wait. I never, you got the wrong one for burglary. All I ever did... Will you please be silent? To continue. You have a right to counsel. You have a right to adjourn to secure counsel. I'm a vagrant. You have a right to a hearing and a wave hearing. I never done nothing but vagrancy. I already plead guilty. You're not pleading at this time. Can you afford counsel? I was asleep. Legal aid is signed. James Costello. Wait, wait, what's happening James to me? James Costello, Look, doctor I number 0103. Well, uh, what's your name again? Martin Jameson. Oh, Jameson, how'd you like to take that one? Down in the detention room. Call his name. It's Chapin. What's going on? Well, Mr. Chapin, I've been appointed by the Legal Aid Society to act as your counsel. Am I convicted? They already passed sentence on me? No, Mr. Chapin, this is an arraignment. Now, this is a proceeding to inform you of the charge against... Look, I never did no burglary. There's the most mixed up people in there. All I done was, I woke up, I, I hear this, uh, this bell going off, and... Chief, uh, I gotta tell you the truth. I was a little bit juiced. <laughs> Mr. Chapin, first we have to fill out these forms. Look, I went in that hallway to get some sleep. I woke up and I, and I run out on that street and the first thing you know, fuzz comes at me. 
Plus, you know, a policeman, and, well, maybe I pushed him or something. Anyhow, the same thing happened to me once in Denver. Uh, De uh, Denver, Colorado. This, this fuzz... Chapin, this is the first step in a quite long legal process. Now, I want to hear all your story in detail, but these forms come first. Now, I have your full name, date, and place of birth, please. How's Phyllis? Oh, we was sore right now. We were taking the morning off. Lizzie called me to come down here. Assistant District Attorney. Oh, yeah, Jameson. Oh, yeah. Dave usually handles Supreme Court stuff. Very high-class work. The day they put him down in the coal mines with us. You're doing volunteer legal aid work, Jameson? Yes, I graduated just a couple of months ago. Actually, I've applied for the District Attorney's office. Oh, the only question is why. Yeah. He's sour today. Find any interesting cases this morning? Well, I had a car theft and a wife beating. Then there was the old fellow on the burglary count and assault. I'm going to request a hearing for him. I think sounds straight enough to me. Well, on the burglary count, I'm not sure the state has a case. Oh, well, what do you think it takes to make a case, Jim? Look, Jameson, this court has 200 tangles to go through every day. I'd like to avoid a hearing unless it serves some special purpose. Don't you think you better just... Uh... Well, no, I think you should have one. Okay. But I warn you, you're tying up business, and uh, I'm afraid Dave might bounce you around a little. Well, Harvey, is it your pet? Today, just close the shop up. No, I tell you, I can't. I have to stay. I have to testify. The man got himself some cheap young shyster in the good old oh, boy, in the subways and shuffling around in court. Uh, uh, I, I was just thinking. I, I don't want to spend all afternoon listening to you. Just close up the shop. That's all. I have to stay, oh, honey. There's okay. going to be a hearing. I... Samuel Chapin recalled. Samuel Chapin. Is the arresting officer here, Officer Ralph Dutka? Yes, sir. You swear to tell the truth? Is he sick back there? Is that man sick? Well, get him out. It's bad enough in here. Proceed. State your name, shield number, and assignment. Truman Ralph Dutka, shield number 24719, 12th precinct. Did you arrest the defendant? Yes, sir, myself and Officer Silvieri. State the circumstances of the arrest. Yes, sir. On the 5th of January, we were on motor patrol duty. At 11.59, we heard a burglar alarm. We proceeded to 227 East York Avenue. And we observed this man. Officer Dutke indicates the defendant. He, uh, come out of the premises. I left the car and called him to stop. He struck me with an object. Then he ran. Uh, me and Silvieri pursued. Use necessary force. I object, Your Honor. Oh? Isn't that a conclusion, Your Honor? Necessary force? Is uh, learned counsel asking me or telling me? Go on, Mr. Costa. Uh, do you have the object with which he struck you? Yes, sir. Will you show it, please? Uh, for the record, uh, Officer Dutke exhibits a wrecking bar, Jimmy, 16, 18 inches in length. I asked that it be marked in evidence. Did you... Did you search the defendant? Did you find any money or valuables in his possession? Well, nothing in his possession. Uh, there was some money lying outside the shop where he could have dropped it. Did you speak to him? Yeah, about uh, selling me with the Jimmy. I said that was rude. Did you talk to him about the alleged burglary? Well, no use. <laughs> he was falling down drunk. Your witness. Representing. Lots of luck. Counsel, they proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, Officer Dutka, where exactly did you first see the defendant? Coming out of the shop. He broke the glass to get out. Broke the glass to get out. Where's the closest street light? Uh, it's on the corner, about 90 feet. 90 feet? Uh, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, stop repeating the witness, young man. What? Oh, yes. Your Honor, I'm sorry. Officer, the door you say you saw the defendant come from, is that the only door to the building? Uh, it's a tenement apartment building. Uh, see, the store is slightly above ground level. There's a door to that, and there's another door leads in, into the apartment part. Officer, is it possible you saw the defendant come out that other door, the apartment house door? That's it. 
That's why well, I come out. He came out of the store. He, he broke the glass when the lady inside turned on the lights. See, we pulled up, and I moved uh, out. Why would he break the glass? To get out. He didn't have time to work the lock. Well, but how do you assert he got in? Through the back. Through a back cellar window, then upstairs, and he jimmied an inside door. Did you see him break the glass and come out? Objection is argumentative. The witness has already stated that he saw the man come out. Sustained. Counsel, this is not a trial. This is merely a hearing to establish whether the people have a prima facie case. Now, I'm to rule on that if you'd like. Your Honor, I'd like to hear the state's further witnesses. Mr. Costa, call your next witness. Uh, complaining witness. Mrs. Irene Cruz. I've never seen her. Never in my whole life. Be I never quiet, seen her. please. You uh, swear to tell the truth? Yes. Are you Mrs. Irene Frug? You operate a store at 227 East York Street? Yes. And you reside at the same address? Yes. At the back of the shop. I used to live upstairs, but I was married at the time, and, and my so-called husband Mrs. decided Frug, to leave uh, me. Just answer the questions, please. On the night in question, did you, uh, on or about 9 o'clock, uh, close and lock your premises? Yes. And then I went to sleep. And then about midnight, I heard the alarm and the glass breaking. And I, I shouted, help! Somebody's trying to rob me, help! And, and then I got up and I put on my bathrobe. And then I went to the window and I yelled, help! And then I went into the store, I turned on the light and I saw him. He was sort of crouched over. And I said to him something like, uh, what are you trying to do to me? And then he ran out. And then he hit the officer. And you subsequently found valuables missing? Eighty dollars in cash. And a plastic laminated picture of the SS United States. Uh, uh, will you uh, look at the defendant and tell us if that is the man you saw? Him? Him? The woman lives alone. The husband leaves her. And she's the victim of every other uh, drunken... Mrs. Krug, please. No further questions. Mrs. Krug, can you tell me what happened to the SS United States? What? Well, you've stated that someone stole that plastic laminated picture, you said, and $80. Now, none of this was found on the defendant. He dropped $20. Well, the rest he must have thrown away. There was a wind, people standing around. Someone sees money laying on the ground, they don't stop to ask questions about this. Did you see it in his possession, the money or the picture? He dropped $20. The rest was gone. Did you see him drop it? No. He's got the proof on her now, ain't he? She didn't see me. You know why she didn't see me? Because I never burger anything. I, I, why don't you ask me what happened? Ask me, huh? Or ask him. He knows. You tell him, Judge. Be you tell him. Mrs. Krug, would you say, waking up with these things going on, that you were very excited? Screams. You were very excited, and it's possible that you thought you saw certain things. Objection which... is argumentative. Yes, sustained. Uh, counsel will approach the bench. Uh, you too, Mr. Weed. Young man, what is the intent of your question? Well, Your Honor, we wish to test the credibility of the witness. Who's responsible for this hearing? Well, of course, Your Honor, I am ultimately... I requested it, sir. Yes. Well, young man, this is a classic example of when you should not. Do you have a motion in mind? Yes, Your Honor. I'll hear it now. The defense wishes to dismiss the complaint as it relates to the charge of burglary, insofar as the people... I was hoping you'd say that. Motion denied. Well, then, Your Honor, I ask that the charge be reduced to a misdemeanor. Denied. Held for grand jury. Your Honor, with regard to bail... Bail, 5,000. And now, young man, be seated. Costa, let's get along with things. Leonard Cromoni. Complaining witnesses, arresting officer. Patrolman, tourist. Come on, come on, break it up. Break it up, you guys. What's the matter with you? Now, you lay off each other here. You know what I'm going to do? I'll sick my daughter on you. She'll clean up on both of you. Come on, run along. Officer Dutka! Officer Dutka! All right, Sylvia, so just for a moment. Oh, hello, Mrs. Uh... Oh, Krug. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, we met on the occasion of my store getting robbed. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you ever find the rest of that money? Not a cent. That bum threw it away. 
Well, I just wonder where he threw it. You know, we jumped him pretty quick. Yeah, I got scattered. Who knows? Well, you must have looked for it pretty good, though. It's kind of unusual that you wouldn't find any of it. I'm a woman that gets victimized by men. I got married once. I got the man to protect the store. Protect? Yeah. My husband, he was worse than any of them. Uh, look, uh, you take a good look nearby the cash register. He might have heard the alarm and had time to shove it into a crack somewhere under the rug. He didn't take it from the cash register. He, he took it from the cardboard box on the shelf. I hide it at night. You know, I told you all that last night. Yeah, well, that night, uh... uh gotcha, come on! Uh, Silviari, just a minute. I, uh... want to check some things. Campbell, Martinez, Stojak, Miller, uh, Logan, Schreiber. I can't out. They'll all make pretty good witnesses, except maybe Logan. He's done time. Well, I don't like enough of those folks. There you go, second? Yeah, sure. Martin Davidson. I'm showing him around. Martin, this is Frank Malloy. Hi. And this is Dave Cotton. Yeah. Hi. Oh, you know each other? We bumped heads in Criminal 1A. Yes. Martin was applying for a job here, and I thought... What are we doing over in 1A? Legal aid, volunteer work? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you got a rough ride that day. Yes, that's the way I look at it. So did the defendant. Oh? Well, uh, I'm not sure I agree with you on that, uh, Mr. Jameson. An arraignment's a sorting out process, you know that. I felt, uh, handle that for me, will you, Frank? I felt the evidence was strong enough to warrant. I felt that he was entitled to a full exposition of the people's case against him. I feel he got it. Vagrant broke into the store. We get 25 burglaries a day, Jameson. I'll probably see that case again next week at Supreme Court 530. At that time, if you feel a few small details were neglected, while well, we can... Yeah, thanks. If I get the chance. It'll be on the calendar. Well, I'm glad you came over. We had a talk. And you uh, had a chance to look, look things over. Yes, yeah, thank you, Mr. Salizzi. Well, we have a few applicants, of course, but uh, I'll get in touch. Thanks. So long. What's the proof? Oh, Tony, I don't know. I, I just saw him work out for three minutes. But you saw it. Well, he was nervous. Probably one of his first cases. He, he sort of ran into the bench. But on paper, he looked pretty good. Tony, I didn't mean to pass judgment. Uh, Dave, uh, I struck out on that well work business. And have to subpoena the book. Who's paying attention to me? I sit here for two weeks, wait for somebody to tell me something. One more for the rich, another for the poor. It was this young fella, see? This uh, young lawyer. I told him everything. Whatever became of him. I ain't seen him since. Who got a different one? I'll tell you the truth. I need to drink pretty bad. A arraignment, you get one DA, one legal aid. Indictment, you get a different DA, a different legal aid. Arraignment before the Supreme Court, a different DA, a different legal aid. But he's the only one that knows my story. The one I had. Nobody else can come and talk to me. Tough. i tell you what it is. It's a machine. They pour you in one end, they start turning the crank. Out come forms, you fill out forms, you fill out more forms. Chapin. Yeah, Chief. Oh, Chapin. You've been indicted by the grand jury. You'll be on the calendar. I wasn't there. What? I wasn't there. What's this jury? Nobody asked me nothing. You don't have to be there. Look, Chief, you can hold this young fellow for me. You know, the, the young uh, from the first trial, this young lawyer. He needs the arraignment. Now, I'll take it easy, Champ. You'll have a lawyer. When you get to part 30, they assign a new lawyer to you. Uh, Chief, you, but you find out this. Get a hold of him some ways for me. You can find out. Yeah, yeah, Chief, yeah. look. Uh, why, why, what's this grand jury? Nobody asked me nothing. Yeah, yeah, why don't they come and ask me? They just put me in the machine. Yeah, 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 yeah. oh, Someone's got to pay attention. Clark, I'm warning you, I'm holding it. Will you hold it down? Hey, hold it. 
Right down. Uh, yes, in reference to a case. Uh, Chapin, okay, I think the name was. You? I'm out. Well, I, I called your office. They gave me your name. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 fellas, fellas. Yes, officer, I handle arraignments at one day. What date? Well, sometime back in uh, January, it was the 5th, I think it was, the 7th, right around in there. Chapin. Well, simply, some things about that case kind of bother me. No. You always have to phone for men here. Uh, well, I think it was more a professional job. You know, you know, a professional burglary. Uh, uh, that, that bomb we picked up. I'm not sure if he... Officer, why don't you call the clerk's office? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could get the docket number and all that, but all I wanted... Oh. Yes, sir, okay. Thank you. Docket number. They say it's not luck to loan a guy from money on every day. I'm not supposed to gamble in this precinct, but I guess you know that. We are playing bridge. How do you like this guy? Detective material. Yeah, yeah. Keats, Keats. Ain't there some ways you can look it up? Don't you have his name on one of them forms? Uh, sir, we're going to take care of you. Well, oh, he's the only one that knows my story. He's the only one to come and talk to me. Oh, well, we're going to talk to you, sir. We'll sign counsel as soon as he's... He's tall, he's got dark hair, he's about... He's kind of thin. Yes, sir, but he's not assigned to this court, sir. So you have to excuse us. They sir. took my overcoat, too. They took it right off my back the very first thing they did. Yes, sir. They excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Samuel Chapin, come forward. Is your name Samuel Chapin? You've been indicted by the grand jury of the state of New York and charged with the crime of... Oh, wait, you already done this part. Chief, uh, Your Honor, you already done this to me before. Uh, some other room, some other building, some... You. You was there. Tell them they already done this part. Defendant, your previous appearance was first arraignment on complaint of witness. You are now being arraigned on indictment by the grand jury. Charged with the crimes of burglary in the first degree, possession. You're doing it just the same as before, just slower. <laughs> possession of burglar's tools and felonious assault. You have a right to counsel, you have a right to, to adjournment, to confer with counsel before you enter plea. Now what? You have a lawyer? Look, Your Honor, I've been crying and crying. Look. I can take you down there. I can show you that hallway in which I was sleeping in. Do you have a lawyer here? No. Does anybody care what really happened? No. You just haul me around here, this room and that room, and stand up and sit down and what's my name? Mr. Chapman, I'm sure much of this is very confusing to you, but uh, can you afford counsel? I already couldn't before. I'd like a clear answer, please. No, sir. No, Your Honor. Legal aid assigned. Mr. Chapin. Anderson. You go along with Mr. Anderson. He'll tell you what to do. Then you come back here this afternoon and the court will hear your plea. You name Leroy Smith. You've been indicted by the grand jury of the state of New York. Him! It's him! I mean, the young fellow there. You remember me, Chief. You remember, don't you? Mr. Christ, what's going on? I'm sure I don't know, Your Honor. I found him! The young fellow right there. I mean, that's my lawyer. Uh... Portion of For the People, presented by Marlboro Filter Cigarettes. You're where the flavor is when you're in Marlboro country. Mind if I come in? Sure, Eddie, the more the merrier. Counselor, you represent Samuel Chapin. I'm here as a friend of the court, okay? Thanks, I could use some guidance. Martin Jameson. I'm Eddie Christ. I gather you already... Yeah, uh, we already have. Well, now, what's the beef? I am asking Mr. Coster for a reduction of the charges. The defendant says he didn't commit the burglary. Even if he did, first degree is excessive. But in view of the assault, which he admits, you feel the defendant might be willing to plead guilty to a reduced charge. What do you suggest Mr. Coster reduce the charge to? Misdemeanor. Well, now, let's see. Oh. FBI records numerous arrests all over the country. Vagrancy, loitering, nothing big, no crimes against people. He assaulted the police officers. First time, no previous possession of weapons. 
Come on, Dave. Well, he was drunk, of course. All right, what about attempted grand larceny second? How about letting that cover the assault, too? I thought you were neutral. All right, let it cover the whole indictment. Jameson? Seems like a pretty fair offer. Look, I know you'd like this whole thing settled. You're right about that. It troubles me a little. I've talked to him twice now, and he's told the exact same story. All right, Jameson, if you think he's innocent, let's go to trial. We seem to be deciding everything right here, right now. It's not according to what really happened. The facts don't seem to matter as much as the forms or what will hold up in court. I have to say I don't like it. And I have to say I don't like it either. In the best of all possible worlds, it wouldn't happen like this. But you want facts, Jameson, I'll give you facts. In a 24-hour period in Manhattan, 200 arrests for crime were made. If every one of these were brought to trial, it would fill up every court in the Eastern Seaboard. Therefore, fact two. As a practical matter, 90% of these cases have to be settled without a trial. Which brings us to fact three. A system of arraignment, hearing, indictment, and rearrangement. All very mechanical. But what it does is deal step by step with the most obvious parts of the thing. And at a certain point, we arrive at a scene like this. Fact four. And you're right, Jameson. We do hope to settle this thing right here, right now, on the basis of forms. This is a sort of trial, a bargaining session. And out of it, we hope to get some sort of rough justice. Now, let me ask you a very informal question. Do you think your client is innocent? Burglary, alarm, police arrive, just in time to see a man skipping around a corner. By the time they grab him, he's already stuffed the money down some manhole. And me, he says, I just happen to be passing by. And what happens? He's arraigned, and right there, the case is tossed out of court. No evidence. Well, but here we're lucky. Money on the sidewalk. Two witnesses who saw him coming out. A jimmy in his hand, which he used on a police officer. And he's lucky. If he had swung harder or straighter, he might be charged with some degree of murder. Jameson, just give the man a full, clear explanation of the alternatives. If he's guilty, he knows it. Let him choose. Well, just the same. For a guy fresh out of law school, he's not doing so badly. Fella, I'm over here. Did you talk to somebody about me? Yes. I talked to the assistant district attorney and to the head of legal aid in this did, court. Did you tell him my story? Did you tell him yes. how you were sleeping yes, in the hallway? No. Mr. Chapin, you have a choice to make. Mr. Chapin, I want you to listen very closely while I explain. Now then, as it stands now, the charges against you are three of them. First degree burglary, possession of burglar's tools, and felonious assault. Now, the state can prosecute you on all of those charges. Go to trial, and, well, the state might win. But I didn't! I'm trying to explain. Now, the state in this case would like to avoid a trial. The question is, if the state reduces the charges to the lowest possible felony, do you understand what I mean? Well, would you be willing, then, to plead guilty? You mean cop a plea? I've done that lots of times. You know, Babe, we see more you know yeah, right yeah, well, I, As I, it stands now, first degree burglary carries a minimum sentence of 10 years. 10? And it carries a maximum sentence of 30. Well, look, uh, fella, I, well, I'm if, not... uh, if you choose to plead guilty, however, you can do so on the attempted grand larceny second charge. The maximum sentence of two and a half years. Oh, I won't. I didn't do no burglary, and I ain't gonna cop no plea. I, I. Look, Chief. You say burglary first is ten to thirty years. What's the ticket on the other one? Two and a half years maximum. It's a long time for sleeping in the hallway. Chief, look. You gotta tell me. I, I gotta know. You think they really stick me with it? The burglary part. I mean the. Uh, Irregardless if I... Well, Mr. Chapin, if you're innocent of the burglary, you 
have to plead innocent. But all I can say is, so far, the people's case appears fairly strong. Ah, they'll convict me. Sure they will. They've been doing it all along. Look, uh, how do we do this other part if, if I cop the plea? Well, well, we'll go back to court about half an hour from now. Your case will be called, then the district attorney and I will confer with the judge. Then the court will reduce the charges, and then the judge will ask you how you plead, and all you have to say is guilty. Treated me too bad. I all together. I uh, I guess it don't matter too much. People versus Chapin recalled. Your Honor, may the defense counsel and I approach the bench. Your Honor, the uh, defendant committed a burglary at night, assaulted the police officer, but in view of the fact that he was obviously intoxicated, and in the absence of any previous like offenses, the people recommend a reduction of the charges to attempted grand larceny in the second degree. Mr. Jameson. Your Honor, the defendant is now prepared to plead guilty to the reduced charges. Well, counsel, for a man drafted from the audience, you've done very well for your client. Don't you think, Mr. Carter? All right, Mr. Jameson. At this time, Your Honor, the defense offers to plead guilty to the crime of attempted grand larceny in the second degree under the first count of the indictment to cover the entire indictment. The people respectfully recommend acceptance of that. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Chapin, you have heard what your attorney has said, have you not? And do you now wish to plead guilty? Yes, uh, yes sir. You do plead guilty? Yeah, Gilly. And you now admit that you did break into that store and you took the... No! What? I didn't. I'm just making a deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean that uh, uh, they asked me to cop a plea. All right, I'm going along with that. I'll cooperate. What's the matter with that? got his signals crossed and blew the whole bit. And said he wasn't guilty? Mm. Yeah, you should have seen the look on the kid's face. The lawyer. He didn't know whether to laugh or cry. <laughs> well, hadn't the defendant been told what he was supposed to say? I guess not, or else he forgot his lines. The judge had a fit. Mm, what a system. It breaks down when you don't say the right mumbo-jumbo. Oh, it didn't break down. It's just that now we've got to go to trial and spend the money and the time to the whole bit. Dave, what if the man isn't guilty? Couldn't that possibly explain why he had trouble saying he was? Okay, forget it. Did I say something wrong? Not a thing. Nothing. Did you have lunch with your mother this afternoon? Dave, you know, I'm not some kind of moron, and I don't like being treated like one. Okay, I'm mad for your mind. Look, all I suggested was in this one instance, you don't understand what you're talking about. Well, then, then why don't you explain? Discuss it instead of acting like it's some sort of tremendous mystery that only you can fathom. No mystery. Three years of law school, you got it. Be my guest. Isn't that cute? Well, all I can say is I sure hope I never get caught in that meat grinder well, down there. If you're innocent, you won't be. You mean nobody ever got picked up who didn't do anything? Nobody looked like you. If I were old and ugly, you'd think I was guilty. Old and ugly? Old and ugly, perish the thought. Did I say innocent? You? Dave, why don't you call that young lawyer and see what you can do, huh? Look, I'm going to make that law school whiz bang wish he were back in his father's upholstery business. Mm -hmm. That'll help. Now, come on, call him. No. Yes. Maybe.
him to be in my office at 9 tomorrow morning. Satisfied? I'm sorry, too, Mrs. Krug, but it looks like we'll have to prepare to go to trial. Uh, what I'd like... Uh, uh, m m m Mrs. Krug, what I'd like to do is send Frank Malloy, an investigator for our office, over to see you. He'll uh, ask a few questions, take a look around, get a few more details. That, that, that's right, Mrs. Krug. Oh, and what, I, what I'd like to do is... Uh, the defense attorney has uh, asked permission to go along, too, and uh, that's agreeable with us. If that's agreeable. His name is Jameson. You may remember him from the arraignment. Uh-huh. Oh. Well, that's your first impression, Mrs. Krug. On longer acquaintance, he gets worse. Right. They'll be there around 10 o'clock. Uh, 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 good... Uh, m m m Mrs. Krug, goodbye. Oh. Now. I've been talking to Chapin for an hour and a half. He says now he won't plead anything to anything. He says he's beginning to enjoy himself. Oh, fine. I hope you are. I'm, uh, I'm Martin Jameson. Yeah, we met. I don't want to see real doubt in the case. It's all right. We stop the machine. We take a closer look. But this guy, you say he's enjoying himself. He said that's right. He's throwing logs in the machine, crosswise. He still says he's innocent. I, I don't care what he's... Oh. But please tell me. Where does it show? Look what it says. Two witnesses. Opposite that guy. I saw him come out of the store, so I'd broken the glass. Then the lady put the lights on on the inside. Mrs. Krug, I heard the alarm. I shouted. I went into the shop. I turned on the light. I saw him there, sort of... Jameson, have you uh, read all this over? Yeah, a few times. Why? I'd like to get in touch with Patrolman Duck at 12th Precinct. Yeah, that's right. I, I saw the lights come on. And he was outside. Yeah, well, if I saw him come out, you're right, I'm not sure. You, you know, Mr. Custer, another thing. I've been wanting to talk to somebody about this. For instance, this was a pretty complicated job for somebody as drunk as he was. And another thing, somebody knew exactly where to look. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, I can want you to uh, swing by there and meet us sometime after 10. Right. Meet us? You coming along, too? Yeah, I thought I might. If it's all right with Mr. Jameson. Jimmy the door, and 
and he didn't go for your cash register. He knew he knew where you kept your money, apparently, in a cardboard box under a shelf. Now, now, do you see what bothers me, Mrs. Drew? Is being so familiar with men hang around. A single woman, they wait for a chance to... Chapin was drunk, Mrs. Cruz, reeling drunk. Now, isn't it possible that someone else or some other... Isn't wonderful. A woman runs a shop. A brother hangs around. He gets a chance, and then he robs her. And then he gets himself a cheap shyster lawyer, and then, then all of a sudden, there's a bank robber. And then he gets himself a cheap shyster lawyer, and then, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, now, it's my fault. No, 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 Mr. Cruz, we just want to be sure. That's all. Completely sure. Hey, Dutka, he saw him. He saw him coming out. He hit him right there where you're standing. Officer Dutka was in a moving police car coming from that direction with his view partially blocked by these windows. Now he knows he saw Mr. Chapin crouching here with the broken door behind him. He said he saw him coming out. Not sure, Mrs. Cruz. He's not sure whether he saw him come out or whether he thought he saw him come out. Things are very confusing, Mrs. Cruz. People get excited. Things happen very fast. I saw him. I saw him in my shop crouched right Don't there. Don't you think this Officer Dutka is uncertain? That Never mind, Dutka. Me. Me. What I saw. I saw him in my shop. You think a man gets away with everything? Well, you just take me down that court and you leave me be a witness. I tell you, he robbed me. Uh, Mr. Coster, look, something's come up. One of the men from Division. Officer Dutka, well, all whole week. Why didn't you bring along that bum Chapin, and then we could all dance the polka? Uh, say, Mrs. Crook, there's something I'd like to show. Listen, I pay taxes, and I'm entitled to some protection from the city. I want you to know I'm a woman. I'm a human being like everybody else. Mrs. Mean. Crook, will you please? She's trying to. You said you had something? Uh, well, if it is anything, they pulled in a hotel room burglar this afternoon. Uh, one of the division men called my attention. Seems he was using a Lloyd that looked like it was cut from the picture of a boat. What? Well, you know, a Lloyd. <laughs> it's a plastic strip, Mrs. Crook. They used to work on the rocks. Oh, anyway, this one looked like it was cut from a picture of... This. SS United States. What are you talking about? Well, don't you remember, Mrs. Crook? That night the money was taken. You said someone took... I don't remember nothing, and I'm not going to listen to any of you anymore. I just want to get down to that poor... Mrs. Krug, look. I borrowed a mug shot of the man. I'd like you to take a look at it. Just on the chance maybe it's somebody you'd recognize. Maybe somebody was hanging around here sometime. Yes. My ex-husband. Innocence! That's what protected me. It was my innocence. The law had a little bit to do with protecting you, Mr. Chapin. There's only one remaining charge, Mr. Chapin, and Mr. Coster is going to reduce that from felonious to simple assault. Oh. You figure I might plead guilty to that one, huh? I devoutly hope so, Mr. Chapin. Well, I don't know. You said I hit that cop. Oh, uh, you know you did. Well, no, I don't know. I might have touched him slightly. But it was self-defense. He come at me. He spun at me. Me, you, I'm innocent you, you, by You better center. consult Let's your lawyer. Understand. Hey, just a second. I, uh, I hope we can work something out. Yeah, let me know, will you? Mr. Coster, after everything that's happened, I, you know, I feel some regret at me. No, no, no. Don't feel any regret. You did the right thing. You revealed the state's case in that first hearing. You brought out certain inconsistencies. You were lucky, but you were right. But I was lucky. I talked to Anthony Silesi this morning. He wondered, you know, about your application to the DA's office. If you could drop by around 2 o'clock. If you're still interested, that is. Hey. Hey. Uh, go talk to your client. Thanks. <laughs> the people presented by new Ajax laundry detergent with ultramarine plus stronger than dirt